Ecclesia is in war. Ecclesia is in a warfare against the gates of hell. We are in a constant war against the gates of hell. What is a gate? A gate is access, an entering point, and an exit point. That's a gate. So if you give an entrance to hell, what happens? Demons from hell will have access to that particular place where the gates are opened. My question tonight is, what realms are opened against your family? Pastor John, I don't believe in realms. I don't know what realm is. Whether you believe it or not, that thing that is afflicting your emotions, your urges, your health, your mind, your intellect, your thoughts, are gates of a certain spirit. Gates have been opened. Spirits have been unleashed. You, you, listen, whether you like it or not, the universe, the earth, the physical world, the mental realms, the spiritual realms, and of course the emotional realms are controlled by invisible forces. There are creatures for your emotions. There are creatures customized, created to infiltrate, influence your emotional realm. There are powerful creatures that are made to influence and control and seduce your mental realms. Even the words from the mouth of Peter was identified to Satan. Was allocated to a higher force using his tongue to speak. The question is, that feeling you are having for that man, that feeling you are having for that woman, where is it coming from? You think it's your feelings? No, there is a gate of inordinate affection that has been unlocked to your emotions that is causing you to have that deceptive, inordinate urges towards somebody. If you ever give expression to such demons, you're finished. Every demon comes with a curse. Every demon comes with an affliction. Every demon comes with a detrimental effect on your spirit. This I say then, walk in the spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what does this mean? What does this mean? It means that you cannot overcome your flesh by mere observation of God's commandments. You overcome the flesh by walking in the spirit. You can know that something is sinful and still do it. You know why? Because the only way one has the capacity to overcome the flesh is to begin to walk in a realm that is beyond the physical illusions called flesh. Flesh is a realm. The spirit is a realm. So wherever you walk, you fulfill the lust of that dimension. This I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh, the flesh. So this is the flesh. It's a definite article. The flesh and the spirit. These are two spiritual entities emanating from certain two unique distinct realms. The realm of the flesh, the realm of the spirit, the spirit of self-control, because the fruit of the spirit is likened to the offspring of the spirit. Fruit is always called child or children. So the, 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 the spirits that come from the Holy Ghost are the spirit of love, self-control, perseverance, patience. Just go and look at all the uh, fruits of the Spirit as listed in Galatians 5. These are the powers 
the spirits that we come under their influence when we walk in the spirit. When you walk by your flesh, the spirit of fornication will control your urge. The spirit of heresy, the spirit of uncleanliness, the spirit of, 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 of malice, the spirit of strife, the spirit of hatred, the spirit of covetousness, the spirit of anger, the spirit of witchcraft, and mental evil projections will begin to dominate you. You know why? Because you have opened the portal of flesh and the works of the flesh, the spirits that walk the flesh will invade you and cause you to fulfill their abilities. When the spirit of fornication comes upon a man, that's the spirit of urge that will cause you to begin to desire fornication or adultery. And by this time you will fulfill it. That loss is planted. So meaning that, that word in the Greek, fulfill the lust, fulfill is to complete. Yes, to complete, to finally complete or accomplish that urge. That unforgiveness, you finally now fires back. You've completed. You have fulfilled that lust of your flesh. You have fulfilled it. The urge was there trying to cause you to do it. By the time you did it, you have fulfilled it. You have satisfied it. You have fed it. So it has now been established. It has been established as a stronghold, captured in your bloodline, captured in your mind. So it's going to take a lifetime to cast it down. Or a vigorous fasting and prayer, heavy prayers, to be able to bring down the throne of your inordinate actions. That you think that you just, Lord, forgive me. Yes, he forgave you. But Satan has cloned that demon into your mind. So at that point in time, please, if you're a worker in church, step down. When you are filled with lust, step down. When devil is using you, step down. Do yourself a favor. Because God will cast you into the great tribulation. Anyone that causes any of these children of God to fall, the Bible says it is better. Eh? It is better that they tied a, a stone, a heavy stone on you and throw you into the sea. <laughs> so it is better as early as possible. So if you use yourself and cause the downfall of these innocent ladies in church or innocent men or coordinators or workers or anointed people. You see, the problem we have is that we think that because we have done things and we're still breathing and eating, don't you know that your future has been what? Sealed. I am not a, a person of the moment. Do you know that everybody is heading toward the future, not the past? Your past is the one that is crafting your future. Your past and your current behavior is crafting the future ahead of you. I'm telling you now, when I speak this way, people should listen. These are my secrets. May you not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I said, may you not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. God knows that you're mental. God knows you're emotional. God knows you're physical. You've always been physical. You've always had a mental realm, even prior to your spirit coming. You've always had, you know, emotional you know, realm. But God knows that the authority that has the intelligence to govern, to navigate these other three realms, the realm, your mental, physical, and emotional realms, is the human spirit. 
Because your access to the spirit realms empowers the influence of God in your spirit to govern the rest of the spiritual realms that are within you. If you don't pay good attention to the leadership of the spirit on the inside, you are going to self-destroy and God will not be blamed. Let me tell you something. Your physicality is capable of destroying your eternity. Your mental activities is capable. Your mental activities are capable of destroying your eternal fate. And your emotional activities are capable of destroying your fate in Christ. But if you bring these three activities, these three realms, under the authority of your spirit, by the Holy Spirit, you will be surprised how each part of these realms that are within you will come under the glory of the Lord. And your entire life will bring fruit and pleasure unto God. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things you would. So, so you don't do what you want to do. So for instance, if you walk in the spirit, you will not do what the flesh wants you to do. If you live according to the flesh, you will do the things that the flesh wants and you will not be able to do what the spirit wants you to do. So that means my victory over the flesh is my willingness to walk in the spirit. My conquests, my continued, continuous conquests against the flesh is my willingness to be diligent in walking by the spirit of God. So God has deposited into you a spirit. And that spirit in you is the authority of God over your mental realm. That new spirit that you have in Christ, the Bible calls that spirit the inner man of the heart. That spirit is an authority. That spirit carries all the potencies of God's nature and essence. That spirit in you is your victory over death, over disease, and over sin and the cravings of the flesh. So when God gave you a new spirit, he knew that that's the end of disease. That's the end of sin in your life. Yes, of course, I know that there are other realms that are within you. There are other, other spirits that have invented your mental realms, invented your emotional realms, your urges, and all of those. But God knows that the fire that he has deposited in your spirits, if aflamed, if stirred up, if fired up, will consume and destroy all of satanic inordinate establishments and deposits in your physical, mental, and emotional realms. The cure is in your spirit. The healing is in your spirit. The rivers are in your spirit. The gifts are in your spirit. But man would have to do what Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 said. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So it's not about being born of the spirit. It's not about, oh, I have righteousness. If you have righteousness, do you live righteously? It's not about boasting that you have God. 